If you guys like head, if you guys like handbag and want to know, <laughs> hi y'all. This is Train. Welcome back to my closet. Now, before we start the video, I would like to share with you my goal for 2020. I understand that it's the middle of the year, not exactly a New Year's resolution, but your girl is a professional procrastinator, so I finally started. Better late than never. Let me know in the comment section below if you've achieved your New Year's resolution or you like me, where you're like, mm, we under lockdown, maybe it's time I do something for myself. In 2017, I had a mini viral video, which is my wedding video. From that video, I collected a whopping $5. At the time, YouTube would not let me collect my coins until I get to $10. By the time I got to $9, I was pumped. In my head, I'm like, you get her, you get her, dinero. Hey, I just want the green, want the money, want the cash flow. Yo quiero la venta si cincuenta si lo siento. Hey, a month passed. No dinero, no pesos, nada. YouTube has changed their term once again. Now I need a thousand subscriber and four thousand watch hours to get said ten dollars. And for that reason, I'm out. Now we're in 2020. We're all under lockdown. There's no places to go, nothing to do. So I decided why not try YouTube again. If you guys like handbags and want to know how to save up for them, where's the best place to get a good price for them, how to maintain them after you get them, and where to sell them when you're bored of them, please consider subscribing to my channels to get these tips and more. Now onward to the video. I am Asian and being Asian is in my blood to not want to pay full price for anything. And this includes luxury goods, especially if said luxury good is a fashion item or a fashion accessory, fashion jewelry, things along that line, because they are not going to retain their value. For example, my Hermes Click H bracelet, I bought it at the time when I was younger in life and single, ready to mingle. But now I'm at a different stage in my life. It doesn't fit my wardrobe. It doesn't fit my lifestyle. So I end up selling it. Guess how much fashion file pay me? Mm -hmm. $350. I lost 50%. 50% y'all. It was like a kick in the batch. <laughs> oh, that, that was so painful. <sighs> now, I've never been kicking the batch before, but I can only imagine that that shit hurts, okay? Can't believe I lost like half of what I paid for. But that's the reality with fashion clothes and jewelry. In general, people don't want to buy used stuff. A bag, they're just holding it on their hand, but article of clothing, scarf, bracelet, things like that, no one wants to pay full price for that. So when you go to resell it, the most you're going to get is about 50%. So why would you then spend so much money on an item that you probably will not use for the rest of your life? Some of y'all like, oh, but I love this. I'm going to use it for the rest of my life. Girl, marriages don't even last for the rest of your life sometimes. So how is it that you're going to commit to an article of clothing for the rest of your life? Save your money for luxury winter wear. My two tip for you is number one, shop when no one else is shopping. It is over a hundred degrees outside. It's freaking like a toaster oven. No one wants a winter parka, cashmere sweater, wool jackets, things like that. So this is the best time for you to come in like a lioness in the safari waiting behind a bush and grab these items before winter comes. And you are probably asking me, but train, I am a fastinista. If I buy things six months ahead of time, by the time I wear it, it'll be out of style. If that's the case, then you're probably not buying things that you love. You're probably chasing after a trend because if you truly love something, it should last you at least a couple years. The reason I say get something you love versus what a lot of YouTubers say, which is get something timeless and classic. A lot of us have different dress sense. I am the type of person who's very basic. I like black, white, and the shades in between. But a lot of people look great with color. Not everybody do well with those 
cool color tone or even like warm basic tone. Some of you have skin tones that are beautiful with the reds, orange, things like that. For me, uh, that's uh, I look kind of washed out. But anyhow, I understand that everyone dresses differently. So just get something that you love. It might not be in that season, but how you look and feel is really determined by the fit of the clothes whether something's going to make you look gorgeous or maybe it might even emphasize a flaw um, for instance the belt bag trend what if your waist is really big do you want to wear a belt bag to emphasize your waist so this is why i would say get something that flatters your body type that you would love versus going with a trend it used to be summer winter fast fashion came along and now each week they're coming out with new things. So if you're chasing a trend, you're never going to catch up. And you're, if you're buying the clothes this week, it will be outdated six months later, like you said. However, if you buy something that you love and flatter your body shape and your fashion sense, you're more likely to wear it for years to come. My second tip for you is to shop sales and clearance. If you're the type of person that's afraid somebody, one of your friends is going to catch you in the clearance rack, do not be. <laughs> if you're that afraid, you need new friends because your friends is going to lead you down to the road of financial ruin. You need friends who are like, what? You got that for how much? How much off did you get that discount? Where's the sale at? When does it expire? Do you got coupons? This is the type of friends that you need that's going to lead you to the road of financial freedom. Because if you have financial freedom, then you can afford things like this. Taking my own advice, I'm about to unbox an item that I got for winter. It is the Hermes Ex Libris Stole. It's a predecessor to the Hermes New Libris Stole, which is retailing for $950. It was on Fashion File for $670. Mark down because mind ya, it's like hell outside. No one wants a cashmere and silk scarf. So I paid only $385 for said scarf. Let me show you what it looks like. I have a confession. I actually took a break in the middle of recording because I felt kind of icky handling the scarf. I opened it up to just to make sure there was no big holes in the scarf. But then I quickly went to dry clean it because we are in the middle of a corona pandemic. It's a scarf. Who knows what the last owner did with it, whether they just like wrapped around their nostrils or whatever. And I just didn't want to touch it really. So that's why there was a break in that video. And now I have the scarf back from the dry cleaner so we can examine our product. This is the Ex Libra Stole. It is 82 inches by 29.5 inches. Let's undo this so we can see what it looks like. Ooh, nice. The color is white, but in real life, it's a beautiful oyster color. It has this luxurious, beautiful sheen to it. Almost as if it was bathed in the tears of my bank account, y'all. At the end of the stall, we do have the Hermes logo up here. Unlike the new Libra scarf, which has the Hermes logo throughout the scarf just blown up, I like this scarf a lot better. It's elegant and understated. It has the logo, but it's very small and it's toward the end. I want to show you guys a close up of this scarf so you can see why Hermes would charge a thousand dollars for it. Look at the fine weaving. 
Look at that. This pattern is so elegant. Down to the fringes. Look at that. My goodness, how meticulous is that? And if you look at the side, they are hand rolled. This scarf, look how thin it is. See through, very lightweight. But when you touch it, it's so soft. I feel like I'm petting a bunny. So let's look at the logo. Unless you are wanting a Birkin or a Kelly from the store, even though this is very fine craftsmanship and the scarf is just stunning, I still would not recommend that you pay full price for this. You can get the scarf in new or like new conditions such as the one I got here for about 50 or 60% off. Don't do it. Don't make the mistake I did in my 20s of buying this scarf brand new from the store. Because I did that. I bought the new Libra scarf. I paid over a thousand dollars. I remember I was a student and I was ecstatic. It's just so stunning and beautiful and I appreciated all the craftsmanship and all that good. But I had a little mini health crisis aka kidney failure. Then I had to sell my scarf to pay for tuition because I couldn't work at the same time I was in school anymore because I was so sick. So there you go. Life happens. Crisis happen. Do you want to really spend over a thousand dollars on a scarf that when you sell back? Let me see. I sold that scarf for about seven hundred and fifty dollars. I got three fourths of my money back. That's because I kept everything. The box, the receipt, the tag. I mean, if my SA had spat on a piece of paper that came with the packaging, I would have kept that too. Even then, I lost about 25%. Lesson learned. Don't do mistakes of trying in her 20. Get this on sale. Salam, friends. For this look, I'm wearing my scarf as a hijab. I'm not Muslim myself. However, I've been invited to mosque by a friend. And I feel that whenever you step into another culture's place of worship, you should try to dress in their dress code out of respect. It's just like entering somebody's house and taking off your shoes if they're Asian. Wearing non-conservative clothes place of worship to me is a bit offensive. It's almost like you got invited to a black barbecue and you decided, I'm not going to eat this yummy food. Instead, I'm going to bring KFC. Not even the spicy version, but the original version. You know, the kind that they pretty much boil the chicken without seasoning. That's how I feel when people dress a little bit on the skinky side in a place of worship. It's just out of place, y'all. Don't do it. This next look is for every day. It's very low-key and casual. This look you can wear in the beginning of fall. To make this a summer outfit, all you would do is take off the jacket, the scarf, and the beanie. So that's my one tip for leveling up. You need to layer up. Think of your seasons in terms of summer and winter when you shop, all the seasons in between. Just start layering up pieces. It will save you money and make you look more fashionable. Clothes that looks interesting to the eye usually have multiple textures and layer. So layering up is always a good idea. This Hermes scarf is very long. So you're going to have plenty of option on how to wear it. For this look, it's going to be really casual, so I'm just going to turn it a couple of times and just throw it to the back. And then bring down the front. So it looks like this. And then I got to tie off the back. So this is how it looks after you tie it off in the back. It's just very casual knot. Just hangs on your neck and keep you warm. Probably at the end of the summer, beginning into fall, this outfit would work. If not, you're going to get kind of chilly on the arms. Most people don't wear scarves in the summer, but I do because I'm chronically anemic. <laughs> I get cold all the time, so if I'm going to any event that is in a reception hall, some events at night, they're usually very cold. So I would wrap my scarf up and pretty much play around with the pleating make it look like a shawl and this scarf is so soft you guys it feels really luxurious and it goes well with a simple white dress i think it adds to the outfit without looking too 
distracting or uncoordinated. I will show you how it looks whenever you turn it into like a mini poncho or more kind of like a jacket if it gets colder during the night. So what I did is I draped the scarf around my arm and I tied it off in the back. So as the night get colder, I'm going to pull this scarf up on my arm and it's going to look like a jacket. Depending on how you tie the tie in the back, how low or how high, you can pretty much adjust the length of the sleeve of your quote shawl. And it looks really cute. It's so versatile. Instead of buying a shawl just primarily for one dress, now you can wear this with multiple outfit. And as you can see, you can make use of a scarf even in the summer. I rarely wear color, but if I do, I really love a deep red. I feel like it's stunning. It goes pretty well with white, which is 95% of my wardrobe. Every once in a while, you feel a little bit flamboyant. So for me, that's these burgundy pants. It has almost like a velour texture. Great lightweight pants for fall. With the scarf, I just wrapped it around twice, pretty much hit the end in the back so that it doesn't look too messy in the front. I'm Asian, so my body wants to be near the equator at all times. If I'm not near the equator and the temperature drop, I'm out. <laughs> As we get in colder and colder throughout the year, I care less and less about fashion. It's all about survival and staying warm. So this is pretty much how I look in the winter. I got a wool coat on that I can layer up. Got just a t-shirt, jeans, sneakers. I can run to my car from wherever I'm at because snow and train do not mix. I hate snow. The first time I ever saw snow, I loved it. I made me a snow angel. I made me a snowman. My neighbors thought I was crazy because at 8 o'clock at night, I'm still running around in the field, stepping on the snow. It's a freaking miracle. Then after nine months of snow, I'm like, when will it stop? Will I ever see the sun again? So I realized to make me happy, I need to be near my equator. I need to go back to my natural habitat of staying where it's warm. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Remember to like and subscribe. I would do more lookbook for you guys, except it is 100 degrees outside, y'all. I'm about to pass out. I can't do a winter wear video in the middle of the summer. But this room got very poor ventilation. I can barely breathe. So please hit like and subscribe to support. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.